Okay, so I was asked a question by a commenter about how to do a hollow extrusion. I don't really recommend this because I think that um, curtain, the nature of curtain walls is that they are expansive and often put on rather large buildings. And that amount of detail can really choke a model. But if you really want to try this, or you really have a need to do this, uh, this is how I might suggest doing it. Right now what I'm in is um, I'm in a generic model, face-based, and this is a workaround which I explained in another video. You can actually, without using the adaptive component family as a nested family, you can create a profile. I don't like to use the adaptive component family to create profiles because um, the planes are a little bit fussy. They reset as the, as the host plane whenever you touch them, and it's inconvenient to do this kind of work that I'm going to do um, in order to do this process. So what I did was I set up... Um, on the, you know, you're left with a, you're given a crosshairs in the default generic model face base, and I went in and created a series of planes here and here. The outside planes are set with a, an equivalency dimension, and then they're parametized with a parameter. In this case, it's it's W for width. In this case, it's D for depth. And then I created uh, another set of planes that. Um, that are inset from that, and those are inset with a parameter called thickness. So within this model, you can probably tell what's going to happen next. I actually have, I actually have a, a family type. One is called inside, and it's got a thickness of one quarter. The one is called outside, and it's got a thickness of zero. And you know the way you do that is you just come in, you create, and you draw model lines, and you know. I, what I did was draw some lines, and whenever you touch a reference line, it'll automatically let you snap to them. This is a little confused right now, but I can I can show you that. If I uh, tab select and delete these guys, I'll come back and create model lines. Pick my rectangle tool. Do that, and then lock all these guys. And I'll save. So now I'm going to take this this file and I'm going to load this file into um, into an adaptive component file. Okay, so here's my adaptive component file, and I've I've created a, a four point adaptive component like a curtain wall panel. And what I'll do is I'll just grab one of these components and hide it to get it out of my way. And I'm going to set the end plane of this guy. Come on. There we go. So set the end plane of, of this line as my work plane and I'm going to load that uh, face-based drawing that I just did. I have to click on to place on work plane and come in and lay that guy right there. So now here's the cool part. I've got this guy and you see when I select it that the type is outside. If I copy, paste, um, align the same place and it gives me a warning over in the corner. There are identical instances. But I'm going to just, while it's still selected, change it to inside. And you see now I've got two profiles. And, uh, and I didn't know you could do this but um, a commenter tipped me to this which I thought was pretty cool. So I'm going to select the outside and I'm going to control select my chain of lines. I'm going to shift deselect one of these lines. So I just have a horseshoe selected and I'm going to create form. And it does what we all expect it to do. But now I'm going to come in and grab the inside profile and control select these lines and shift deselect one of them. And then create a void form. And it actually works, which surprised me. But uh, again, if you do this and you make it too complicated, it might choke your model. So now I've got this guy, and I'm going to load him into a project that I made in which I, um, and I already loaded that, that's why it's giving me a warning message, which I've created a mass and I've divided several of the faces and turned on the nodes. So since it's already been loaded, I actually have to go to Create tab click component and grab my extrusion tutorial component and link it up to those points. 
And what, I, what I'm testing to see is if this thing is going to twist or explode or do something weird. So I'll grab this guy and make a repeater. And it doesn't look like it's, it's exploding. It's, it's showing in the same weakness that is often showed, which is it's not, uh, it's not finding endpoints. And these, these aren't actually endpoints of this surface nodes. So if, if I delete this, you can, uh, you can see what's going on here. It's a, a Revit glitch where sometimes you don't get nodes on the ends of, of a uh, trapezoidal surface. If I jump back, um, this front surface is actually twisted. This one is, um, is plumb. This one is twisted. So I'll come in and create a component and again lock it on to four nodes and that looks like it placed okay. I'll grab it and make a repeater and this is orthogonal so it should hopefully lock onto the whole surface and it does which I think is pretty cool if I tab onto one of these guys zoom down around it let's zoom in real close and yep turn on yeah it's hollow it's like because it's twisted though you see it's actually doubling up on these guys and twisting them um, which is you know kind of an issue but I guess if you're doing a half profile well if you're doing a half profile you actually wouldn't need to do a hollow aluminum extrusion because you'd have a, a kind of horseshoe a, a loop remember you can only do in your profiles um, where did I put that guy you can only do a one complete loop that's a closed loop as, as is common in the adaptive component environment so that's pretty cool and thanks to to Rory the commenter for letting me know that that was possible